Let us talk about a curious little thing called Vega 12. For all the flack that we've been giving NVIDIA for not releasing a new set of graphics cards after Pascal, I mean, it's been two freaking years, AMD kind of did the same. You know, we had the RX 480 and then we had the RX 580, which is basically just a rebadge with a higher TDP, which means they can overclock it a bit more. And it's the same exact car, just with less restrictions placed on it. It's no new architecture. We didn't see any IPC improvements. The RX 580 was just kind of meh. But, but now is the time of graphics card rumors. At a time where everybody wasn't able to get their hands on them and everybody was hoping to sweet, sweet heaven that to be able to wrangle one from the gatory jaws that was the minor lockdown. Now we have opportunities coming up on the horizon that might make current cards currently what we can buy, but then also gives us hope for the future and what else is coming out. So without further ado, let us talk about a curious little thing called Vega 12. Now when I say Vega 12, I'm not referring to something that is of the likeness of Vega 64, Vega 56, and then Vega 12, which has 12 compute units. No, my friends, so this leak that we're talking about, which isn't a leak, uh, it's actual information that we have. Vega 12 is like Vega 10. You see, Vega 10 is the internal name that was given to Vega 56 and 64. It's the architecture that we receive, like Polaris 11, Polaris 10. But now we have some final, not definite, but kind of interesting information on Vega 12 that I think we should take a look at and just discuss a bit. So this article is coming from Foronix. Foronix. I'm not sure I'm supposed to be saying that, but that's how I'm saying it. So AMD posts an open source driver patch for Vega 12 on Linux. If you guys don't know this, AMD is pretty good about giving regular GPU update drivers for Linux to make sure that they don't get left out in the dark, which is why you find a lot of Linux users actually prefer red team over green team because they have better support over there. However, with Linux, everything's kind of open source. So when AMD pushes out a driver, we get information that's in the source code that they might not have necessarily disclosed anywhere else, but is baked into the kernel that they've released. So a few days ago, there was a patch that was, or 42 patches that were released for the GPU in the mainline Linux kernel. So one of AMD's Linux driver team members posted the 42 patches, which also had support for Vega 12. So it's interesting that they've added it, but let's look a bit deeper because there's not a ton of information. We don't have the compute unit size. We don't have a whole lot of information that's going into this kernel, but we do have a few things. Basically, we have one thing. We have one thing, we have one thing. So with the Vega 12 information that was released in the driver, we found that there were five different PCI IDs associated with Vega 12, which means that they are anticipating five different types of GPUs under Vega 12. And when you look at where Vega 56 and 64, they fall under Vega 10. So this is like, this is not, we're gonna get five different iterations of Vega that has 12 compute units, but rather this is an entirely different subset altogether of new Vega cards that might be coming out. However, it is worthy to note that not all the time are the PCI IDs used for actual consumer cards, but could be reserved for other things. But chances are looking good that we might be getting a new set of Vega cards. And this is where we get into the theory crafting portion of the video because there's a couple different ways that this can go. The, the odds that we are getting new Vega cards that are better ve than Vega 56 and 64 are basically zero. Like the GCN architecture that Vega is built on, like Vega 64 is the best we're gonna get. Vega 64 liquid cooled is like the highest end that we're gonna get out of the Vega architecture. This is probably not Vega refresh on a lower nanometer architecture, but rather, rather what we could be seeing are one of two specific things. The first being that this could be the Vega mobile chips being brought onto a desktop variant. So everything that's being released with the new APUs or with the new mobile graphics setups that are coming out, that is what could potentially be coming to desktop where we're seeing, you know, eight to 10 to actually 12 compute units on a small lower end Vega desktop graphics card to compete with the likes of the RX 550, the GT 1030, somewhere in that region, but on desktop. This could be a very, very budget friendly consumer oriented product. So it's actually interesting to note that Vega Mobile that's paired with the Intel Kaby Lake G 
processor that Intel and AMD are working on together is not technically true Vega Mobile, but was actually developed in partnership with Intel and is a very specific thing and not part of Vega Mobile. And so that's not what like the, the GPU that is on the Intel Vega subset of chips will not be coming to desktop. This could not be that because it's not actually Vega Mobile, apparently, according to Lisa Su. That's what I found out. Who knew? Probably one of you did because you guys are just so much smarter than me. Anyways, the other option, the other option besides it being Vega Mobile is that this could be, we could finally, finally be seeing the replacement for the RX 560 to RX 580 series. Yes, my friends, Polaris could be done away with altogether, which means that we would get Vega in a consumer friendly fashion. We would get a $200 Vega card that could potentially rival the GTX 1060, except for that's about to be obsolete. So what are they gonna do, huzzah? So this is what I'm hoping for the most personally, is that we are going to see some sort of Vega 28, Vega 30, Vega 35, obviously that's a terrible number. Why would you name anything 35? That's not the point. The point isn't that it's 35. The point, I'm excited for a mid-tier range version of desktop Vega, not this high-end Vega 56 that everybody has their hands on, but the, the actual full-fledged amazing Vega. But there are going to be a few issues that are associated with putting desktop Vega in a more budget-friendly package, because if you notice, one of the main things about Vega is that one, they're hot and they're loud, but then two, they're actually expensive for the type of performance that you're getting, which isn't because that they're worse engineered or that they're worse products, but rather that they're kind of over-engineered and they have HBM2, which they wouldn't necessarily need to have. But the issue with bringing it to like an RX 570 level of performance is that you either have to redesign the memory controller and bring an entirely new setup for Vega, which it wasn't designed to do, and slap on GDDR5X and GDDR6, or you have to run with what you have and get a cheaper implementation of HBM2, which could mean slower clock speeds or it could mean lower capacities. We could be seeing an RX Vega 28 with only four gigabytes of HBM2, which would be an interesting card to say the least, which like that, it kind of feels like we're taking a step back as far as the amount of VRAM because like four gigabytes, even at 1080p can be completely used up with a ton of games. But with the high bandwidth cache controller, it could potentially give space so that the four gigabytes might not necessarily be a limitation in games, but would be a limitation for cryptocurrency mining. So this could mean that the new entry level Vegas, while they might still be Vega under name, might not be the go-to choice for cryptocurrency miners because of their lower graphics memory amount. I'm just spitballing here. I'm just trying to throw out as much information as to what we actually have when it's concerned with Vega, Vega mid-range and Vega mobile and everything that might be coming with Vega 12, because it's an exciting prospect that we might be finally getting something that might refresh uh, the, the mid-tier level consumer card. But unfortunately, like I've said previously, Previously, it's it's frustrating because Nvidia definitely has the mid-range market corner. You have a GTX 1060. Yes, it competes with an RX 580, but then RX 580s are just completely out of whack for their pricing, and so they're not worth buying because of cryptocurrency mining. And so Nvidia has that market cornered for gaming. And so hopefully a Vega 28, a Vega 32, somewhere in there could hopefully allow for us to get consumer grade graphics cards that are meant for gaming, used for gaming, and then we would see the RX 588 gigs being sold for mining. We would see the RX Vega 56s and 64s still being sold for mining, because what the crap can you do about that? But, but, a new set of Vega 12 chips might bring it in. But I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts on what Vega 12 could possibly be. Do you have any more information than I do? I tried to do my best research I could before giving this video, so I didn't see anything else out there as to what the Vega 12 could be alluded to. A lot of people speculate that this is just Vega Mobile coming to a desktop variant, so it's gonna be very low end, but then other people were speculating that it is gonna be the desktop mid-range, but hopefully with GDDR6, but because of the issues with redesigning the memory controller and all of that, not necessarily sure it would be financially worth it, but let me know, do you have any more information? What are you hoping for? What type of Vega chip are you excited to see to come to the mid-range or lower end graph? Like, what, what do you want from Vega? Do you want it to, what type of card are you expecting to come out of AMD? Unfortunately, this isn't gonna be the high end, so we have to deal with that. Vega 56 and 64 is as high as we're gonna go until basically Navi comes out, which is in 2019. But this is the latest information that we have on upcoming Vega cards. I wanted to bring this information to you guys. I am still traveling, as you can tell, new room, new place, every single day. This is the benefits and joys of being on the road. Anyways, we have to, we're heading out tomorrow 
to a new location, which just driving, driving all the time. Thank you guys so much for the support while I've been on the road. It means a lot. Let me know what you think of the new release schedule. We've been releasing twice a day. It's been quite interesting to do. It's actually been a little easier. I'm sure you guys can tell that this is less produced. This is more just me giving my thoughts, but also trying to present as much information as I possibly can. It's a different style than what we normally have. We're still gonna be having the normal style. It's just that we can't keep that up and still maintain the amount of views that we're supposed to get in order to support the production system that's going on around here while I'm on the road. And so there's a ton of technical complications that have led to releasing twice a day, but I wanna know what you guys think of the new schedule. Do you watch half of the videos? Do you watch none of the videos now? Are you watching all of them? Let me know. I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say either down in the comments or again over on our Discord top link in the video description. We have a Get to the community's grown there. I'm, I'm very excited for the Discord community. Anyways, guys, smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Cheers.